We're back, everyone, talking about turmeric and its extract called curcumin. And I brought some today that I want to show everybody. Look at this most beautiful, beautiful spice. It's such a bright, bright yellow color. Richard, look at that. Yeah. You know, I use that to cover my color of, guess what? Tofu. tofu right. When I make my right. scrambled tofu so that the girls would eat it when they were little, uh -huh. I would just slather it in turmeric. <laughs> they didn't know the difference. It's not that no. powerful. It no, really it, isn't. It has a very subtle taste. Little did I know the health benefit well, that I was giving them to, by doing that. You, you did know a good it? Thing. Well, we were talking about curcumin, uh -huh. which is the extract of turmeric. Yeah, it's the pigment that makes and, that yellow. Right, and its effect on cancer. Yes. That's just amazing to me that something like this would have anything to do with cancer. Yes, it initiates apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. You know, normally our cells have their lifespan, and then the DNA telomeres directs it to destroy itself. And if it doesn't happen, you can end up with cancer. Uh, unrestricted dividing of cells, multiplying, uh, you know, that's what cancer is. So the uh, curcumin compound, this pigment, initiates that apoptosis in in a wide variety of cancers. We, we see that phenomenon in many uh, components of our diet, but it's a select cancer mm -hmm. here, select. The right. curcumin has a widespread anti-cancer effect. We found that curcumin decreased hormone-driven breast cancers. You know, estrogen tends to drive breast cancers. We found that phenomenon, a phytoestrogen effect. We also found that curcumin inhibits the carcinogenic effect of smoking on oral cancers. Now, all of you, I know everyone knows someone who has developed head and neck cancer, oral cancers, and how difficult they are to treat. The, the, the surgeries are disfiguring. They have to take out large parts of the face. I mean, it's in the neck. It's really a terrible thing. Well, curcumin helps to kill that cancer off. It's really quite remarkable what it does. It also shows suppression of human biliary cancer. This is cancer of the bile ducts another very, very difficult to treat cancer. Great potential for these types of cancers. Curcumin has been studied and shown to inhibit cancer development in all six of its stages of growth. Transformation, initiation, promotion, invasion, angiogenesis, and metastasis. All the stages of cancer growth are inhibited by this remarkable compound. That, that we could stop right there and we should all be taking it. But wait, there is more to this amazing substance. We also have found from studies that curcumin improves the response to traditional cancer therapies and it reduces the side effects. In other words, if you take this along with your cancer therapy, radiation, chemotherapy drugs, they will be more effective, a lower dose is needed, and you have fewer side effects. I wish I'd known that when I went through cancer That's therapy right. because the side effects well, it's a lot to endure, mm -hmm. but it's necessary if you want to live, you know, this is what we have to do. Now, let's go to curcumin in the brain. I want to keep good brain function as long as I can, and I know you do too. Inflammation is strongly linked to the degenerative diseases of the brain, and the region of the brain that is inflamed correlates with the type of degenerative disease. For example, Parkinson's involves inflammation of the midbrain. Okay, Alzheimer's involves the hippocampus and the frontal parietal lobes. Okay, uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, Lou Gehrig's, affects the upper and lower motor neurons. Difficulty moving. Okay, all right. Inflammation of the brain is often due to the brain's immune cells' attempt to fight off other health issues, such as plaques such as viruses, such as excitotoxins. Remember Dr. Blaylock has joined us and talked about how MSG and aspartame are excitotoxins that damage the brain, cause terrible symptoms in some people, but damages everyone who ingests it, okay? Guess what? This stuff counters that, okay? It's not just avoiding MSG, folks. There are other natural phenomena that goes on. We talked about the head trauma of the soccer player or the boxer or the football player. Who hasn't been bumped on the head? We're learning a lot more about the damaging effect years later from head trauma. That's an excitotoxin-induced head uh, or brain damage. And it comes from the microglial cells, the immune cells of the immune system. Well, this amazing stuff helps to calm that down and does it remarkably. Dr. Blaylock writes in his books, curcumin has shown itself to be the king of anti-inflammatory substance equal to the most powerful prescription drugs. Okay, but 
does it without side effects. That's the great part about it. Curcumin suppresses inflammation by down-regulating the eicosanoid pathway, thereby minimizing the damages of omega-6 oils. Let me explain quickly. We've learned that if you have a lot of corn oil, safflower oil in your diet, omega-6, it initiates inflammation. You have to bring up your omega-3s, fish oil, flaxseed oil, and it helps to calm that. Well, curcumin down-regulates that inflammatory system. This is big, folks. This inflammatory pathway through the eicosanoid pathway is a major player in degenerative disease, and this stuff helps prevent that. Combining magnesium with curcumin protects the brain from injury during a stroke or during brain surgery with 50% less damage. Let's say you have a stroke. If you look on the MRI, you'll see a spot, say a golf ball size of damage. If you had received curcumin with the initiation of that stroke, it would have been half of that size. Okay? This is big. This is the difference between disability and carrying on life after stroke. And you may say, well, we don't have stroke when our family, I'm not, I'm not at risk for stroke. Aging causes tiny little strokes the size of the head of a pin. And we all get this with aging if we have a lot of free radical damage, okay? Curcumin helps to prevent that by 50% decline. Add a little magnesium to it and you really improve this result. So are you, are you beginning to see the power of this stuff? And this is not my opinion. I, I express my opinions on this program all the time. But this is right out of the literature, folks. All right, curcumin reduces amyloid formation in the brain by eight different mechanisms. Amyloid toxicity, autoimmune disease, amyloid doses. If you've heard of it, you know how serious it is. Curcumin is also effective in preserving brain function. We mentioned that the Indian population uh, of the subcontinent of uh, South Asia, a fourth the rate of Alzheimer's disease, and it is thought to be due to this substance. Curcumin with vitamin D lessens Alzheimer's disease plaques, okay? Seniors who ingest curcumin daily score better on many mental state exams. You go to the doctor and there's questions about grandmother's mental state. Is Alzheimer's coming on? Well, the doctor can do a quick three to five minute little survey asking questions, count backwards by sevens, this type of thing. I'm gonna show you three objects, a uh, coffee cup, a pin, and a ring. And then I'm gonna ask you in five minutes what those were. Can you recall? That's basically what we're doing with the mini mental state exam. If you're on curcumin, you do better. That means lower rates of Alzheimer's, less dementia, less all. And that is amazing to me. I, I just get so excited. Curcumin has been found to bind up iron in the brain. Now iron is something we all need, but at high levels, it becomes an extremely powerful free radical. It can destroy the brain. It can destroy to hemochromatosis, hemosiderosis. And all of our, remember all of our experts say, be careful with iron. If you're not low in it, don't take extra. You don't need that because it's so damaging. Well, curcumin binds up that iron and prevents that phenomena. Isn't that amazing? Uh, let's see what else. Increases the levels of the important antioxidant glutathione, one of your master antioxidants. It binds up dangerous free radicals in the brain for you scientists by the 4-HNE and the peroxynitite system. These are very damaging free radical initiators in the brain and it helps to calm that. Pretty heady stuff, but the end result is something we can all understand, right Cindy? Because right. you, ha you gotta keep me in check oh, yeah. on this science because oh. I can go way off in left field and I don't wanna do that, yeah. okay? Now here's a very important one. The aging brain generates less energy than a young brain. The brain is only 5% of our body weight, but it, it uses 20% of the energy of our body. It is immensely active. The brain is always working even when we're asleep. We know this now. Well, guess what? If you are taking curcumin, you will create 158 more percent, 158 percent more energy in the brain. The slow brain of aging, the, the dullness of aging, that's what this helps. Keeps that ATP flowing into the brain. It gets into the brain and helps with that process. Isn't that amazing? See, I am particularly concerned about this because in my family on my father's side, Alzheimer's disease is rampant. I want to be the first Becker in three generations to not die of Alzheimer's disease. And this is one of the ways we're going to do that, okay?
Isn't this amazing? It is. You know, we have a lot of information on the heart, on diabetes. We have more on curcumin in the lungs. And we're going to get into this when we return. I would, we've got to do it justice. We haven't forgot about you with heart disease, curcumin and heart disease when we return. <music> 